Depression. We've all been through it at one time or another in our life. And it sucks. Especially when you're going through a breakup. It's probably the worst stage of a breakup. Just feeling numb. A loss of emotion. A range of emotion. Everything loses its colour. Food loses its taste. You feel anodonic. There's no joy in anything. And you're feeling like, what's the fucking point? I'm never going to find anyone like that again. And I get it. I've been there many times. I've had many breakups. Dumper and dumpy. Sucks on both ends. And breakups don't necessarily get easier. You just learn how to deal with them better as you develop the tools as you go through life. And that's going to be episode number five of the seven stages of a breakup for the dumpy. So, going to do the intro and we will get straight into it. Welcome back to the Luffix. It's Nick, doing my best to get you through your breakups as easily and as healthily as possible. With compassion, but no BS. You're probably tired of me saying this now, but come join the Facebook group. Type in the Luffix Breakup Recovery into Facebook hit the like, sorry, hit the join button. Come and join the wonderful people there all making friends and helping each other through breakups. And if you need my personal attention, my one-to-one attention to get you through your personal unique situation, which probably you're sitting there thinking no one else can understand, drop me an email. We'll get into it. We'll do some coaching. We'll get you on the right path and we'll get you pointed in the right direction and feeling better. With all that said, Let's get into episode five. So by now at this phase of your breakup, you're probably just thinking, I don't want to do anything. I can't get out of bed. There's no joy. There's no point. I used to go to this place with my ex. I used to do this with my ex. I used to visit this family member with my ex. I did everything with my ex. And now your main support mechanism has been taken away. Your main social outlet has been taken away. Your main source of validation has been taken away your comfort blanket has been taken away and quite possibly nine times out of ten this wasn't your decision it was removed from you without your say so without your inputs without your voice without a negotiation and that is really really hard to deal with and that sucks and it sucks balls but here's the thing with depression the more you stay in your house, the more you want to stay in. And that's the vicious cycle. That's the insidious part of it. Is that, I get it, there are days that, hey guys, I don't want to get out of bed and I'm okay right now. You know, I'm doing doing well in all aspects of my life right now. And there are days I do not want to wake up at 5 a.m. to go out into the freezing cold when it's pitch black and go to the gym. But I know if I get there, if I do just use give myself that that 10 seconds just like right get on with it come and get up and if i can just get up and i can just get to the bathroom and, and brush my teeth and put my gym gear on and get to the gym i know i will feel better at the end of it and this is what you should try to apply to the any other activity that you're doing and i get it you don't you want to sit there you just want to eat ice cream watch netflix or stare at the ceiling because they've gone And if they have monkey branched or rebounded or cheated, it looks like that they're having the time of their lives and you're just, they've left you in their wake and you're just sitting there watching the world go by. And I get it. I I get that's seductive. It's it's the easy way. Not the easy way because nobody wants to be depressed, but it seems like it's the only way at that point. And the more difficult option the more challenging option is to get up, to get out and go and get uncomfortable. But here's the thing, and I've made videos about this before and I, I made one quite some time ago now. Uh, I think it was called Breaking Up With Your Breakup. And what I mean by that is that the breakup can be beca- can become this very toxic new relationship. It's filling in for the old relationship. You're clinging on to the dead carcass of the relationship carrying it around hoping that it's going to come back to life and it's not because even if you do reconcile you've got to bury that dead relationship you've got to bury that carcass and start anew as if that is somebody new in front of you 
So I get that you're down and depressed. I get it. And there's no judgment here. And I was depressed for quite some time during my late teens and early 20s. And it cost me a relationship. It cost me my first love. My first relationship. Now, I'm not saying that we would still be together. Probably wouldn't be because we were young, dumb and just full of hormones. And we had no idea what we was doing. But maybe that relationship could have taken a different path. And maybe it could have still be working. I don't know. But... After that, one thing I did do, even as a young 21-year-old, and I think I probably have to thank my dad for this, is he always taught me to take responsibility and to work the problem. Don't just sit there, work the problem. Get up and work it. And it doesn't matter if you get it wrong 10 times. If you're working the problem, you will, will eventually find the answer. You will find the solution. So back then... And that was one of the worst times of my life. I was very depressed, very introverted, very socially awkward, no confidence. I promised myself that I would never, ever allow myself to be depressed again. Now, that's not to say I've never felt depressed since I have. But the cure for depression isn't to sit there. It's to get up and get stuff done. Even the mundane stuff like cleaning your house. And here's the thing, guys. Even if you've got nothing to do, Get up, make your bed, clean your house, move the furniture around, decorate, yeah? Change your environment and it will make you feel better. So rather than just leaving your washing in the washing basket, get up, go get the washing, put it away. Rather than leaving the plates in the sink, get up, wash them, dry them, put them away. Rather than leaving the vacuuming to the last minute, get up and go and vacuum. This is how you beat depression. You get up and you do shit. Do the boring shit. And once the boring stuff's out of the way, you can move on to the exciting stuff because if you set your environment up for success, you will be successful. And I get it. Depression wants to keep you there. It wants to keep you there all the time. But let me tell you this. If you knew for 100% certainty that your ex would come back in six months, but I'm telling you, hey... You can't be depressed by the time they come back. You've got to get up and do all these tasks. You would get up and do it. So here's the thing with that. You'd get up and do it because you know you've got a certainty of an outcome. But there's only only one certainty in life. That's uncertainty. So you might as well get up and do shit. And if they do come back... Do you want them to find a depressed version of you? Do you want them to come back and think, oh, oh, so I've got to sort your depression out now, have I? That's my responsibility. You know, you're just validating my reasons for leaving. Don't let your ex have that. Don't give that kind of power to them or anyone in your in your life. If they're coming back, you're rene- you're you're rene- you are reno- renegotiating terms. You have to be in a position of strength and abundance and I'm getting shit done I'm I'm taking care of myself I'm leveling up so what are you bringing to the table these are my terms now you want you want back in okay I accept that I messed up but here are the terms I've got my house in order and if you want to come sit in my house if you want to come and live in my house here's the fucking buy-in price here's the rent you're on my turf now not the other way around That's the mindset you need to have with anybody and anything in your life. If I go for a job interview, for like, you know, if I was to leave my day job and go to a job interview, I'm taking 20 years of experience with me in the field that I work in. I get to negotiate my price now because I've earned it and I've worked hard for it. And that's what you need to do with your friendships, with your breakups, with your relationships. It's a negotiation. And you have to learn to say no sometimes. And you have to know, okay, well, look, I've, I've done all this work now. I've beat my depression. I'm over this. You no longer meet my minimum threshold of a relationship. So take care. The person that has the power in a relationship or a breakup is the person that is willing to walk away the most. And that's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Feel better. Keep your chin up. Get up and do stuff. You're going to be fine. I'll see you on the other side.